everyone. Welcome to the DC Today from beautiful New York City. I arrived late last night and we are here. It's the middle of the week and it is the first day of March. And we're just going to do a quick market recap today. There wasn't a whole lot of action. Um, the chart of the Dow today went kind of up and down a little, but really the Dow was up five points on the day. The um, S&P was down more about half a percentage point. The NASDAQ was down about 0.65%. But again, with the Dow kind of ending up flat on the day, it looked sort of boring, although there were a couple little gyrations throughout the day. Um, energy was the top performing sector. It was up almost 2%, where utilities were the worst performing sector, down 1.7. And the thing I'd point out is that real estate was the second worst performing sector and um, that was down one and a half. And so you see the interest rate sensitive areas doing the worst. And, and, and that is largely because of bond yields moving higher. The 10 year touched 4% today. Uh, it was up eight basis points. The 10 year yield uh, closed at 3.99%. So rates higher, rate sensitive stock sectors doing worse, energy materials, industrials doing better made for kind of a flattish day in markets and a bad day in bonds. Um, crude oil, by the way, was up close to 1%. It's still sitting right around $78 a barrel. For all the talk about oil and energy, what's going on, there's a clip of my appearance today on Fox Business where Charles Payne asked me, you know, what's going on with energy? It seems like it's really struggling. And he's talking about stockpiles and whatnot. But really, for all of that talk, um, oil closed 78 today. You know where it started the year? It was 78. So it hasn't even moved. The only economic point of the day that grabbed my attention today was ISM manufacturing. I'm always amazed how quickly it comes out for the prior month. And on uh, March 1, we get the February ISM manufacturing. We don't get non-manufacturing, which is the services sector, till, the end, till later in the month. But um, it came in at 47.7. And the way that this works is 50 is sort of like the base, is like uh, break even. And anything below 50 is a negative number. Anything above 50 is a positive number indicating expansion, whether it's new orders or, or supplier um, deliveries. There's a number of different factors that play in and they're all aggregated together to form an index. That's how manufacturing activity is measured. And anything under 50 is considered uh, a contraction and over 50 is considered expansion. Forgive me if I've said that in the past, but, you know, there's new listeners and they matter too. So, you know, sorry. Okay. Um, new orders were way off of uh, higher than January levels, but still negative. And so we were at 47.4 in the total ISO manufacturing in January, came up to 47.7 in February. Um, so, yeah, still contractionary in ISO manufacturing and the breadth of that contraction, four out of 18 sectors were negative. Um, all right, excuse me, four out of 18 were positive, so 14 out of 18 were negative. Hopefully you knew what I meant. Um, all right, so what else? I, I do go into the Ask David section today about, someone had asked why I suggested full expensing of CapEx as one of my kind of pro-growth measures to deal with this Japanification. And I suggested in a list of things that, that I would do if I were king for a day, instant expensing or full expensing. And, and I hope most of you realize that for businesses that are going to go out and build factories or, or, or some form of capital expenditure that represents an investment into equipment and inventory, R&D, that there are rules that apply to different um, things as to how they, uh, different depreciation schedules um, as to how they go about deducting that. And what I'm suggesting is a cash deduction. So if you go out and spend $25 billion right now, that you get to deduct $25 billion in the year in which you do it. If you spend $250,000 on an on a investment. Now, why do I want capital expenditures to get that kind of a deduction because I think capital expenditures are generally only done for the purpose of some sort of productive uh, aim. Why would a company be spending money on capital expenditures if they didn't believe that they were going to get a higher return on investment in the future? 
and a, a low level of CapEx of what we call in the GDP formula, non-residential fixed investment, indicates a low level of investment to the future. And so it doesn't bode well for long-term growth if you're not getting better productivity. You're not going to get better productivity if you're not getting more capital investment. And I think one of the ways in which one can incentivize greater capital investment is the deductibility of those expenses to help de-risk the investment. And so that was the Ask David section today. Um, I'm going to leave it there. Check out the dctoday.com for the summary. Uh, any other bullet points, there's the link to my appearance on Fox Business today. And uh, we'll be back with you tomorrow uh, from New York to do another DC Today. And we have a really fun Dividend Cafe coming Friday. When I say fun, um, it's somewhat sober, but talking about federal debt. So anyways, that's the scoop. Questions at thebonsongroup.com anytime. Thanks for listening to, watching, and reading the DC Today. Mm-hmm.